Today, people often confuse Indian clubs with juggling pins due to their similarity in appearance. In fact, the two do share a mutual ancestry and a historical connection that goes back more than 100 years. Indian club swinging is an ancient exercise and art form that was first brought to the West during the early 19th century. In both Europe and America, club swinging continued to evolve and became a popular and iconic physical culture exercise, practiced by soldiers, sailors, athletes, women, and children for its health benefits and its artistic value, as well as for amusement. Juggling is also an ancient art form, and up until the late 19th century did not use pins or clubs, but instead used balls, sticks, swords, knives, torches, and other diverse implements ranging from banjos to chairs. However, towards the end of the 19th century, some Indian club swingers began juggling their clubs, or jugglers began integrating Indian clubs into their acts. It's not certain exactly how it first happened. One of the first performers that we know of to do this was James DeWitt Cook of Ohio, a quote, parlor athlete and champion club swinger dubbed the King of Clubs, who juggled Indian clubs during the 1870s and 1880s. In 1885, Cook reportedly gave a quote, beautiful and artistic manipulation of Indian clubs, juggling three clubs at the same time. Another such performer was Charles H. Hoey of Natick, Massachusetts, who, around 1880, began performing throughout America in a club swinging and juggling act, loftily billing himself as, quote, the greatest novelty of the age. Reportedly, Hoey was the first juggler able to juggle four Indian clubs at the same time. However, as he was not able to catch the clubs when finished, his act ended with the curtains closing on him while he was still juggling. The photo you are seeing now is the only one known to exist of Hoey, showing him with his partner Lee, but it's not certain who is who. In 1881, Hoey publicly challenged anyone to face him in a juggling and club swinging contest for prize money, stating, quote, I hereby challenge any man in America to swing and juggle single, double, triple, and quadruple Indian clubs for from $100 to $500 a side in New York or Boston. The challenge was taken up by Gus Hill, then known as the Club Swinging Champion of America. However, in newspapers, Hill publicly mocked Hoey's juggling of small light clubs, calling them ten pins, and claimed that juggling had no place in Indian club swinging whatsoever. Indeed, in previous contests, judges had been indecisive about whether juggling was considered legitimate club swinging, and had handed out awards for them separately. Hoey, however, now reportedly claim that club swinging was merely the ABCs of swinging, as opposed to the high and more exalted and difficult art of juggling. In response, Gus Hill offered to face Hoey in a club juggling contest, but only on the following conditions. Quote, If Hoey wants to juggle Indian clubs with me, I will, on condition that he uses a pair of 20-pound clubs, they to measure 32 inches long, for style, strength, and execution, or I will swing Indian clubs against him, he to do juggling with Indian clubs, and I to do swinging, the one doing the most movements and showing the best style to be declared the winner. A match was eventually arranged for February 16, 1882, before a packed New York City audience. Hoey performed first, for 12 minutes, and reportedly made a very good display. Gus Hill then swung 8-pound clubs, and after 16 minutes, retired amidst cheers, having made far many more motions than Hoey. Hill was judged the winner, and his swinging declared, quote, the most scientific and graceful ever witnessed. Interestingly, despite the supposed rivalry between the two men, Hill and Hoey eventually partnered up in 1891 and toured the country together, performing a quote, juggling and club swinging act. However, following the outcome of the earlier 1881 contest between Hoey and Hill, juggling was no longer allowed to be a part of club swinging contests. In 1886, Spaulding's Handbook of Sporting Rules declared that quote, juggling shall not be considered as club swinging. And later, in his 1913 club textbook, British champion Tom Burroughs stated that rule number five for club swinging contests was, quote, no juggling or holding the clubs below the handles allowed. Nevertheless, jugglers continued to use Indian clubs in their performances. As they were not seeking to impress audiences with the weight of the clubs, jugglers began using exhibition Indian clubs. These were large, hollow, and very light Indian clubs made by Spalding, 
the Narragansett Machine Company, and other manufacturers. These clubs were often adorned with thin brass plating or German silver embellishments to reflect the available light and dazzle audiences. Although intended for club swinging exhibitions, these clubs became favorites among jugglers because of their lightness. In the 1890s, jugglers began devising their own types of clubs. One of the first to do so, with great success, was juggling performer Edward Van Wyck. Rather than hollowing out a single piece of wood, like an exhibition club, Van Wyck's clubs were made in sections with a hollow center and covered in canvas with foil decorations. They were lighter and easier to make than traditional hollow Indian clubs. These were the first true juggling clubs, mainly intended for that, and not for club swinging. Wooden juggling clubs were followed by basket clubs made with a wicker or basket woven body, covered by linen, paper, or other thin material, which could be made even lighter and larger. In this picture of female jugglers, although the clubs look similar to Spalding exhibition clubs, if you look closely, you can see from the texture that these are actually thinly covered basket clubs. Additional designs utilizing new materials followed, leading to the various types of juggling pins that we are familiar with today. Some jugglers, however, still continued to work with Indian clubs. Likewise, some Indian club swingers still integrated a bit of club throwing or club tossing into their routines. Cobbett and Jenkins' popular club swinging text of 1893, widely reprinted, shows some of these techniques. In 1900, Frank Miller, physical director of the YMCA in Dallas, Texas, published a book on Indian club swinging and juggling, proving that some were still connecting the two practices. Miller's book included chapters on large one-handed club juggling, two and three club juggling and balancing, and club juggling with a partner. Some balancing techniques similar to those shown in Miller's text can still be seen in film footage from the early 20th century. The following clip is the only early film footage we could find which mixes Indian club swinging, specifically the snake movements and wrist circles, with juggling. <laughs> 